Hi, welcome to Mrs. Calabash Cooks. Come into my kitchen. At last, the weather, well, the last time I looked out, it was sunny, and now it's meh thinking about it. So today I was thinking, you know, it's summer, we're going to be eating outside, we've got barbecues, we've got picnics, now we just need the weather to cooperate. So today I'm going to do some sausage bars. Now these can be eaten either hot or cold, so you can eat them inside uh, with a side dish or use them for a barbecue and a picnic and a French potato salad. Now the difference between this and an ordinary potato salad is it doesn't have any mayonnaise. So if you have a lactose intolerance or you don't like mayonnaise, then this is the, um, this is the salad for you. So, I've had to make a sausage bar ahead of time because of the cooking time. So we'll just have a look in the oven and see how it's doing. Yes, I can leave that in for another few minutes. Now for this, you need um, frozen puff pastry. The puff pastry that I use comes in two packets in a in a box of puff pastry and it's already pre-rolled so the secret of this is the timing you don't want the pastry to be out too long because it gets too soft and you can't uh, you can't use it and if you take if you leave it in too long then you can't unroll it and the secret with any puff pastry is steam so in the oven I've got a, a, a skillet with some water in which is hot and boiling so it makes steam I've lined my cake uh, my baking sheet with uh, parchment paper and I'm going to wet this causes steam and I'm just going to lift this puff pastry on like that you can just put that on now I'm going to wash my hands because I'm going to be mixing the ingredients so bear with me for a minute if you don't like to touch the ingredients then use a, um, a glove as long as it's not a latex glove and that will just protect your hands so we need sausage meat now today I've used um, Italian sausage meat I want a bit of umph about it chopped onion one large chopped onion Good recipe for using up odds and ends. Fresh breadcrumbs. If you haven't got any fresh breadcrumbs, I just use the stale bread put in the food processor. Then use some panko breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. Use panko. A little tomato puree. It's uh, two tablespoons full of tomato puree. And cheese. This is a mixture of the cheeses which I had in the cheese uh, container. Uh, it's some Gruyere, some cheddar. You need a strong cheese for this. Um, a mozzarella isn't really strong enough. You need a, a good strong uh, tasting cheese. A nacho blend, that's good, Monterelli Jack, and one beaten egg. So this is really very, very simple. We're just going to put everything in there together. I've not put any salt and pepper in because of the uh, sausages that I'm using. Some egg, one beaten egg. Now this is where you have to get your hands in and we're going to mix it all together like this it 
It's different to a sausage roll or a pig in a blanket. It, you could add some herbs to this. And if you wanted a little bit more punch, put a few chilli peppers in, dried chilli peppers. Depending on, you know, the taste of the people that you're catering for. So I'm just going to rinse my hands again. I've got a clean towel down here. I always keep a clean towel on my working surface. Is we're going to press this. It's eight ounces sausage meat. So if you buy, um, if you bought, um, I bought a carton of sausages, two, uh, one packet of um, puff pastry, and then I get two sausage bars out of it. So what we're going to do is just spread it even thickness down there like that. Clean out the bowl like that. Let's get rid of this. You really do need to be next to a sink for this. And then we're going to moisten the eggs, uh, moisten the edges with a little, um, a little milk. Now I've got my very old pastry brush which is actually a paintbrush. I don't like, um, I like the bristle. So let's just moisten the edges like that. And then we can just pull up like so. Now, I'm not going to, um, my pastry is just a little bit soft, so I'm not going to uh, roll the pastry over. You can put that pastry, that seal, at the bottom, but that's nicely sealed, and so I'm not going to disturb it. Now, before you cut the ventilation holes in the top, just do a wash with some milk. The reason why we, as I said before, the reason why we give it a wash first is that as you put the milk or the egg on, it's going to seal the hole. So, just cut through with a sharp knife. I've got the oven on at 400 this so let's have a look and see how the one in the oven is cooking it's a bit as I said before like blue Peter well I prepared this one earlier but um, there we are and we'll put this one will take 20 to 30 minutes to cook oh look at it look at it after about 30 minutes uh, depend on depending on the oven my oven I've got at 400 you're allowed 25 degrees either side uh, which is 200 uh, Celsius um, you can if the oven's a little bit slow go up to 425 or bring it back to about uh, 290, 285, uh, sorry, for uh, 385. So I'm going to serve this. You can serve this either hot or cold. And I've just got a plate, a serving dish, which I've put some greens on. And so you can use this as a salad base. So 
so just put that in the center like that and we'll put that just out of the way on the stove top and to make it look a little bit more attractive let's do some decoration decoration isn't my strong point but I do like to see the different colours so we've got some orange pepper just have a look see what you've got in the fridge so let's put some orange peppers around that there we are and we want to make it look attractive on the top a little orange pepper some tomato let's just tuck it under the side there we lost that bit there we are a little tomato it would be nice when the tomatoes are in the garden again and I can just go out and help myself there we are now cucumber because that's nice and refreshing and you're all ready for a hot summer's meal outside a few grapes intermingled and that is a very very simple um, English sausage bar and so to go with that we're going to do a French potato salad I love potato salad I like it with new potatoes when the potatoes first come out uh, but we haven't got any new potatoes in today so I had to use uh, the old potatoes and um, and and cook them up now I've had to prepare some potatoes beforehand so what you do is peel your potatoes but I like to leave the new potatoes whole and then put them in cold salted water and just let them cook uh, cook gently and so I do have some potatoes prepared here and these are some potatoes which have been cooked now what I'm going to do because you have to put them in the oven so we're just going to put this on one side I'm going to show you how to prepare the potatoes so like magic again I've got another load of potatoes um, the difference with this is you actually marinate the potatoes in wine and broth so it's um, just an eighth of a teaspoon of instant um, stock. I use chicken stock today, but if you're vegetarian, use a vegetable stock. And it's a third of a cup of wine, and I've just got to check, it's a third of a cup of hot water. Um, the kettle has boiled. That is a third of a cup. Now you can do this step whilst the potatoes are still warm. I cook the potatoes whole and then I slice them. This is some wine there. And we pour that over the potatoes.
just stir the potatoes round gently so that you don't break them and then cover and just sit in the fridge. I left mine in for about three hours so they're nice and cold and the stock has almost been absorbed by the potatoes but I'm just going to make sure so I'm going to drain them no look nothing's coming out nothing is coming out but we'll just let those stand there for the minute and I've got a glass bowl here so a a clove of garlic which has been halved and rub the bowl around with the garlic to give that nice garlicky flavour. I do like a wooden bowl for this. So just rub around like that. Now I'm going to put these potatoes back into that bowl just for the moment because we're going to make the topping, the dressing for this. Now this is where it's interesting because you've got olive oil, uh, tarragon vinegar. Now I don't buy tarragon vinegar, I shouldn't say this. I buy it because I always grow tarragon in the garden and so it's very easy to make your own tarragon vinegar. I like to choose a white wine vinegar and then just put the vinegar in a, a jar or leave it in the bottle, add some tarragon to it, put it in a warm place with the sun on it for two or three weeks, keep shaking the bottle like that. At the end of the two or three weeks the tarragon has infused the vinegar and then I remove the original tarragon and just put some fresh washed tarragon in and that's how I make tarragon vinegar very very simple um, I used to sell it at a very very expensive price because the bottles were beautifully um, done with raffita and, and everything and uh, it's so easy to make so oil vinegar. I like to use, uh, for this, I like to use whole, um, whole grain mustard, uh, a Dijon. I find that it has a nicer flavour. So I put some of that in. And I'm going to add everything together. And this is the tarragon out of the garden today. Now if you're using fresh tarragon it's a teaspoon whereas if you're using dried tarragon it's only half a teaspoon because it's got a much stronger flavour. So that's fresh tarragon out of the garden and again fresh chives. And they're just going to be all this together. Just whisk together until you form an emulsion. You can see when an emulsion has formed. And that is the dressing. So I'm going to pour it just over these potatoes. And stir it again gently with a spoon. Now if I was using a wooden bowl I wouldn't bother uh, putting them back in here. but. I'm going to make it the, the bowl rather messy, so let's just do it this way. I'm going to taste, it might just need a little bit of seasoning. Let me have a taste. A little bit of black peppers in order. my own black pepper 
I've got a little spice mill, which was a, a road coffee grinder, and I just put some peppercorns in and grind the pepper, and then it's nice and fresh. A little pepper, a little sea salt, that should do it. Again, stir. Now when you've done this, you can put it back in the refrigerator so it's really, really nice and cool for taking outside. sausage bars and French potato salad. So thank you very much for watching and welcome to my kitchen and we're just going to slice this and have a look and see what it looks like inside. It should be delicious. I like a, a white plate for this because I'm going to put some of the decoration on the plate. Let's just lift this, if I can get it off. Lift this onto the board. There we are. something for this job. Whoops. There we are. And a nice thick slice. Like that. There we are. Put this back. Put that back. I will eat that later. And a little potato salad. There we are. And that is a picnic to play with it. Let's remove everything. sausage meat and all the goodies in there. So thank you very much again for watching. Please join me again next Friday and I'm making, if my memory serves me correctly, I'm doing a, a tomato curry which is like a chutney with homemade hamburgers, beef burgers. So I'll make um, a vegetarian burger and I'll make um, a meat burger. So thank you again for watching. Welcome and bye.